Hey everybody, Josh here from Android Central. I'm sitting with Kevin of Team Win. Some of you might know him as AgroBren. And I've actually invited him here to show us a new uh, platform, a new development uh, thing that Team Win has been working on. So thanks for taking the time to meet me today. Thank you. Um, for the people who don't know about Team Win, can you just give us a little bit of backstory how they were founded? Sure. Team Win was formed by two members, Shinzel and Toast, back with uh, CM. When CM7 was still under development, CM6 was the predominant platform. They brought WiMAX to the map to AOSP builds. Um, since then, other projects that we've undertaken as a team have been HDMI mirroring for the Evo 4G. We took on, we created the kernel manager. Um, projects like that, on top of Toast's involvement with features such as the uh, Evo 3D port of CM7. Okay, very cool. And uh, you've got a tablet here. Is that what you're going to be showing? So, I brought two devices. I've got a ViewSonic G tablet. Uh, standard ViewSonic. Mm -hmm. um, Use it as a development platform because of its robustness as a device. Okay. Um, I've also got my good and trusty Evo 4G. The same one that we use to develop the HDMI code. Okay. So why don't we jump right into starting up Twerp 2. All right. All right, let's start up the device. Cool. Uh, while it's booting up, Twerp 2, this is uh, mid-September. You guys came out with Twerp 1 in July, June, uh, July. That sounds about right. Oh, whoa. So this is Twerp 2.0 right here? This is the default um, interface for Twerp 2. Okay. Um, the Blame Shift Edition. The Blame Shift Edition. So what we've got here, we, we've really... When Twerp was originally created, one of my first reactions when they said, we're going to build recovery from the bottom up, mm -hmm. we're going to start from scratch, was, okay we should make it user friendly. Right. Something I've never found recovery to be. Right, right, All right, the volume right. control navigations. So instead, what we did was said, okay, how could we make this easy to use? Mm -hmm. Now, this is still a prototype. Right. Um, only a couple of the features work. But for instance, we're gonna install a ROM. Okay. Okay. So I tap install. So we're touch sensitive now. And I've got select the UI still needs a little work, but <laughs> we've got our folders over here right. and the files in the current folder. So I'm going to scroll through and I've created an area called ROMs. Okay. Yeah, there it is. I tap ROMs, my file list changes. Awesome. Um, this will all use all of the features people have learned to like with Twerp 1, things like remembering what folder you flash your ROMs from. Right. So I'm going to take the flashback ROM. I tap it. It tells me what my current selection is. Um, I have got different options that I can do. I can wipe the cache or reboot after flashing. Right. Uh, and I hit flash. Now we get to the all familiar flashing, <laughs> flashing stage. Yeah. So what you're seeing now, we've obviously got a progress bar, and we've got the text console mm -hmm. that that everyone has come to know and love. You know, updating Honeycomb three zero one. Um, this is the flashback honeycomb build for the ViewSonic G tablet okay. 1.2. Now this isn't a 1.2 device, so by the end of it, it won't actually boot the <laughs> ROM. Um, there are ways to get it working, and by time we're, we ship, this will work. Right. Um, but because there's extra issues related just to this tablet. Okay. Um, so what you see. Progress bar, obviously, animated using the default graphics right. that Twerp 1 came with, um, which I believe came straight from Google. Okay. Uh, Twerp 2.0, mm -hmm. compared to every other recovery, like even Twerp 1.0, the interface is totally different. Like, we're using the touchscreen in recovery now. Correct. Uh, that's also going to work on phones yes. as well, just scaled down. Just scaled down. Now, one of the nicest features of Twerp 2 is that the interface that you looked at mm -hmm. at the beginning 
um, is actually loading off of the SD card on this device. Okay. There is a default one built in, and actually what you saw would be the one that's built in. Okay. But for development, it's actually more difficult. That requires rebuilding the recovery. Gotcha. So we use what's called theming. Mm -hmm. um, a lot. We're, we're really expecting that the theming community is going to love this. Okay. Everything you saw on that front page was driven from XML. Okay. A custom. There's custom fonts. Um, the font that it's using right now in the update is actually the standard font that all recovery is used to. What's, right. You know, and it's referred to as a fixed width font, mm -hmm. meaning that every character is takes there. a certain size across. But when this finishes this operation, it, we're going to be able to go back to the main menu. And if you actually look, the font is different. Okay. Uh, it is a font called Blue Highway. Mm -hmm. um, our graphics designer, Shift, made the choice. He's actually revisiting all of the UI, really? but this is the preliminary. The UI, themers will be able to take, and we are planning to publish all of the details on how to write your own theme. For twerp. For to twerp, too. Okay. So if you want it to show, you know, sports cars, you can have sports cars. Okay. If you want it to be pictures of women, you can have pictures of women. Anything you want, and it's just a theme. It's a skin. Right. It doesn't require the buttons to be in the same place. Now, as you can see, we now have the main menu button. Mm -hmm. Because the text, you know, well, it falls off the page, we can scroll it. Wow. Uh, question, how difficult was it to get the touch screen working in a recovery? Because that's something that it's we've the, never seen before. Um, there is actually some out there that already do it. Really? Somebody took Twerp 1 mm -hmm. and made it so that it was gesture-based okay. on the Thunderbolt. That aspect was actually one of the easier parts of Twerp 2. Mm -hmm. The difficulty with Twerp 2 was making it so extensible and themable. Right. It was more it was less about the touch interface as it was about the graphical user interface. Okay. So, I want to take this to go one step further and say, okay, uh, you know, similar to Twerp 1, we tell you the battery level, we tell you the time. Right. The time is wrong because <laughs> I've never set the time on this tablet before. Okay. But one of the nice things is that unlike Twerp 1, if you were to just leave this sitting here, that battery level will go down. Okay. We support animations. Had we chosen to, this little Android could periodically wave. Okay. Anything that the themer really wants to do with it, we've generally opened. And it's not just about, okay, specify a graphic here. That's text. That's not a picture that says recovery. That's okay. using different fonts. This is just a larger version of this font, which you can see is not fixed width. Right. Uh, we allow you to load multiple fonts. And we make certain objects that make things easy, like these are buttons. Right. Um, they don't have icons in them right now, mm -hmm. but we support icons. So you can make a picture that represents the install. Okay. Um, but we're going to go back into install, and I'm going to show you the other feature that we really expect ROM developers are going to love. Is we created one called the Blame Shift ROM. Okay. Now this is really is flashback again, mm -hmm. um, with a few minor tweaks. This is fully compatible. To all existing ROMs, okay. uh, to all of the existing uh, ROM installs, mm. um, it's 100% compliant to the Android standards. But when I go into Flash, obviously we go back to the text screen for a moment. This animation, these videos, and this custom installation is all coming from the package itself. Okay. Inside the ROM contains the details and the pictures and the animation to custom design their install. Okay. So instead of it just being, you know, text, and I know like Synergy, um, a very good ROM by a few different developers. I want to say Virus and Min were the two okay. key on that one. When you installed it, it had this ASCII text yeah. slogan saying Synergy. We said, why would they, why do you need ASCII text? Why can't you have Real text, real information. You don't need the progress bar. Right. I added the progress bar because people like the progress bar. Right. And we took, this really is just a rip of a boot animation. Right. Uh, it's a very beautiful boot animation. I really liked it. <laughs> but um, we just took the boot animation, stripped out the, fi the files, 
put them in the animation package, and it's described in twerp as an animation. Okay. Um, including the same loop capabilities that um, that Android gives you for a boot animation. So we really took where the developers can where ROM developers can theme the install. Mm-hmm. So straight from the point where a user has selected they want to install, mm-hmm. they can really own the experience for the user. Gotcha. They can make the user feel like this is part of the device, not some backdoor, you know, secret club. Right. This is that really they're... about giving them the feel. And when you see it redraw the Android, what that means is that we changed pages. Okay. All of Twerp 2 is based on the idea of pages. Pages Mm -hmm. contain elements. Um, In this case, this page, they're they're all very similar pages. They're showing installing system or formatting system. Um, It's just going through the steps, and each time it's telling it it wants to restart the animation, so the animation goes again. Um, So we really wanted the idea that it could take them into... Um, multiple capabilities, mm-hmm. mul- you know, really much like banners, yeah. you know, show, hey, you know, this is what you're installing. Mm-hmm. You know, don't just tell me it looks good. Mm-hmm. Show me it looks good. Show me pictures. Show me, you know, mm-hmm. put up some information. Right. And make it look good. And that's that's really what we've been targeting with Twerp 2 is the ability to look good. Right. And so. It, or uh, uh, Twerp One. When you guys came out with Twerp One, it was built off of the stock recovery, mm-hmm. um, and you were just looking to, or I guess when you were starting Twerp One, did you know Twerp Two was going to be happening? Like yes. was that in the cards? As soon as, as soon as the team, even before it was called Twerp, it was originally called Recover Win. Okay. Even when Recover Win started, my first statement was, "It needs a touchscreen interface, gotcha. and it needs a GUI." And there was a lot of discussion on how to do it. And what was decided was that I was busy at the time on Freevo Mm -hmm. and HDM Win. And so we took that and said, okay, let's go one step further. For now, let's get Twerp 1 out and working in good. And a lot of good developers worked on that. Assassin's Lament, Vivid Border, and Destroy um, are three in particular I'd like to call out. Toast did a lot of work. Right. Um, no project would be complete without a little bit of work from Toast. <laughs> um, there was, there was, really was a team effort, and Twerp 2 really is a team effort. The entire GUI of Twerp 2 sits on top of the core foundation of Twerp 1. Okay. So you are seeing an interface into Twerp. Gotcha. As opposed to this being a rewrite again of Twerp. Mm-hmm. And so, I guess if we were to nail down, I think you've mentioned it before, the... The whole idea behind Twerp 2 especially is to make it as user-pleasing, uh, an easy user interface, and kind of bring it to people who might be intimidated by, you know, just the DOS-looking kind of recovery screen. Yeah. Um, we really want it to be easy to use and convenient for people. Mm-hmm. We don't... It's no fun to have to sit there and toggling weird buttons and... For instance, the um, recovery that most people use on the G tablet, mm-hmm. um, a build from, um, I'm guessing his name is B Kit, B E K I T. Um, while convenient, unlike the Evo 4G, it's not the volume slide, It's not the volume controls in the power button. It's mm-hmm. the volume controls in the capacitive touch. Okay. It seems every device has its own unique way of manipulating it. Right. And what we said was. Instead, why doesn't it follow, you know, they all have touch panels. Right. So why do we need to use, and we do support the capacitive buttons. For instance, I'll show you another feature, and this shows paging. I go into wipe, Mm -hmm. and this is another page. Mm -hmm. Um, It has the same information on top only because I duplicated it here. Okay. I can choose those, but I've also got this little button at the bottom. Right. This is what we call a slide out. Okay. Because, especially for advanced pages and for ROM developers or anyone that's trying to develop for Twerp 2 a theme for either a ROM or for Twerp 2 itself, you occasionally still need to see the console output. Right. Well, I can tap it and bring up the console. Okay. And I can see. Now, and right here, 
an important notice to me is that somewhere in between the update completing, um, we had a bunch of update fails. Mm -hmm. Update is the step in Twerp where the UI um, re-renders. Obviously, there's still some bugs in the code. Um, I can tap the slide out, it goes away. Right. So it's really like sliding it in and out to view the console that's running in the back. Right. The slide out can be in any position. I could make it over here and tap it, and it only grows to, say, half the screen. It's all up to the designer of the theme that's in use. Okay, okay. So we really wanted to adapt to the customers, you know, to, to the clients that want to use it, to the people who want to use it, mm -hmm. and to their style. Gotcha. Um, I can hit home. It takes me to the home page. That's cool. Uh, for themes, do you anticipate housing them on Team Win's website, or they'll just kind of float around XDA? We haven't actually decided a, th a scheme yet. There was talk that um, Team Win may actually host the a theme. place where people can grab themes that they like. Um, they are device-specific. In particular, they're resolution-specific. Okay. For instance, this theme is designed for 1024 by 600, mm -hmm. which is the G-Tablet's native resolution. And that's the other nice thing, is that the same Twerp engine, the Twerp 2 engine that's running this right now, runs the Evo 4G. Right. So all it really needed was a zip file. Okay. Um, we call it ui.zip. And it's, a, it's an XML file, some fonts, and some images. Mm -hmm all bundled together conveniently. So that's really, in a nutshell, that's everything that we've been doing with it. Cool. You know, and it's pretty powerful. We've got even shut down animations. Oh, that's very cool. Rather so, than rebooting and then powering down. Or... Well, you can, you can choose any of the options. Right. And again, it's all controlled from the XML. Mm -hmm. Inside the XML file, there are sections uh, with action. Mm -hmm. And so you can say action, um, reboot, and then as the argument, you can say power off right. or bootloader, Android, or recovery. Okay. And that's how we had those four options. Is it was just specifying a different parameter to, to the function. Okay. We've really gone the idea of giving the themers control over the interface. Mm -hmm. And to demonstrate that better, I'm actually going to switch devices.